So my name is Markus Kreutzer. Uh, I'm an associate professor of political science at Villanova University. So I teach at an institution that is largely sort of an undergraduate uh, focus on undergraduate liberal arts education. We have a lot of small uh, discussion-based uh, seminars. And so one of the challenges or frustrations that I was faced was that the time in the classroom uh, was too short in order to cover all the material that I wanted. So about two or three years ago, I started experimenting with blogs and discussion boards and things like this. But they never really were that useful because they were too anarchic. You know, the discussion boards, they're sort of organized in a chronological fashion. And so whenever the student enters the conversation, uh, it's never quite clear what was said before or the person is responding to something. So the entire discussion that it was removed from the actual text. Um, and it was not uh, a conversation that was sort of networked. Uh, and centered within the text. So somebody brought uh, classroom attention, um, classroom salon to my uh, attention. It is a little bit difficult to describe what it exactly can do because it can do a lot of uh, different uh, things. So what I'll just like to do then is, is illustrate some of the uses of classroom salon through some of the examples um, that I use it for in my classes. So in one class, it is a research methods class uh, where we teach undergraduate students to write social science research papers. And um, at the heart of this course is an actual research paper that they have to produce. And throughout the process of writing this research paper, we have various stages where we do peer reviews. And it sort of culminates in the actual peer review of a draft. And so what we do there is students upload the paper. And then the rest of the class comments on the paper in terms of some of the criteria that we've developed over the semester. So they're meant to comment on the structure of the paper. Are the various elements of the paper present? Is there a thesis? Are there reasons? Uh, is it grounded in theoretical literature? And what is the evidence? So the students then you know, read the paper online and have to use a tag function in order to identify the various elements of the paper. And so this allows sort of an interesting conversation because uh, what, you, what we can do, the students first read the text individually, do all the taggings, and then in class we can compare and see did all the students tag the same elements. If 15 different students tag different locations for where the thesis is, we know that there is a problem. And then you can start talking about it. Well, you know, why did you tag this as a thesis as opposed to, to that? Um, you know, are you unclear of what the meaning of a thesis is? Or does this paper maybe just not have a thesis?